today we're going to play some Tyvar Druid. There's a lot of lists of Tyvar Druid running around. A lot of different versions of the deck running around. I think that I like this deck the most because I like just playing four of these. There are a lot of lists that are like skimping on this and just relying heavily on this. And I personally don't like it. I don't, I'm not too thrilled about the sagas, but we're going to see how they are today. So there's a lot of different things going on in this list. So basically, the fundamental is Devoted Druid plus Vizier is infinite mana, right? So, Devoted Druid plus Luxor is also infinite mana. So, these are infinite mana, and how can you win with infinite mana? Okay, so the ways you can win are basically uh, Dustwatch Recruiter, Viridian Longbow, uh, Layer of the Hydra. Layer of the Hydra is not a guaranteed win, right? Because they can block, but if you have Layer of the Hydra plus Cauldra, right? Layer of the Hydra plus Cauldra, which gives it Trample, that's infinite. Or Layer of the Hydra plus Shadow Sphere, also infinite. So Layer of the Hydra is kind of a win con. I mean, in the dark it is. So, these are the ways you can win. So, Dustwatch Recruiter... You just draw your whole deck until you draw Walking Ballista. That's how this wins, right? And then Walking Ballista just domes them. Um, so these are the ways to win. And Tyvar gives everything haste, and you can return things. You just have a lot of Viziers, have a lot of Devoted Druids. What this list isn't playing is this list isn't playing the Fancy Protection spells. So it's cutting the Fancy Protection spells for just more redundancy in its threats, and, and turn one Esper Sentinel. So... There's all kinds of stuff going on here. We've got Saga Package. We've got a bunch of redundant creatures. And in the sideboard, we've got Big Bad Emrakul. Uh, the original list that I copied, the list that I copied was from Two Clo, uh, Just a league list. Um, they initially had two Gaddock Teagues, but I figured that since we are playing the Eldamri's Call, we might as well have an Orvar uh, against Creativity just to have this. It's kind of a good silver bullet to have. Um, it's not castable, but playing Eldamri's Call and Eldamri's Calling for an Orvar seems reasonable to me. Um, seems reasonable. Seems probably better than the second Gaddic Teague. Uh, don't really know. I mean, Gaddic Teague's obviously a very powerful card against creativity, but, I don't know, it does die to Lightning Bolt. But I guess the idea is that you go Forge Tender, protect the Gaddic Teague, but... You know, a lot of creativity lists are playing uh, pendings and leyline bindings and teferis and stuff like that. So I feel like this card might be a little bit uh, might be a little bit hard to leverage, and maybe just Orvar will be a little bit safer. So we're gonna give this deck a try, and we're gonna see if we like it. We're gonna see how we feel about the redundancy uh, about these things, like. Uh, this is like another version of the list. There's so many different ways to build this list, right? People are building it all kinds of different ways with like Fiend Artisans and Gris and Skyclaves. And this is more toolboxy with ramp creatures and stuff like that. So they're in Tyvar stands, for example. But we're trying to do real simple, real consistent, right? Real simple. Real consistent, a lot of redundancy. You know, turn one Asper Sentinel, turn two Stoneforge Mystic, turn three, you know, Tyvar, turn four, try and kill you. That's what we're trying to do here. You know what I mean? We're trying to keep it simple. We're trying to keep the deck list very simple and redundant. Kind of like how I like to build the Ogboth. Uh, let's jam. Let's see how it goes. Modern Devoted Modern League. Modern League, devote your combo, 100 play points. Let's go. Let's go. This hand seems okay. We have turn one, Esper Sentinel, turn, turn two, Stoneforge. And we're on the play, so, I mean, seems seems good to me. It's a mocha then, like that one. <laughs> All right. Turn one, Esper Sentinel. Go ahead. Now, the question is, is if we play the Saga on two, 
Or if we just go a more traditional slower build where we go like um, Stoneforge. I think we kind of just want a Saga on too. This is our question. Are we playing Saga or are we playing Stoneforge? That's, that's the big question of our time here. How much does this deck cost? Mm, 900 bucks in paper. 420 tickets. 420 tickets. But you could probably build the deck a lot cheaper, right? Like, you probably don't need the Solitude. You probably... You know, I guess a lot of the stuff you... Jeez, these are, these are so expensive in paper. Holy fuck. Jeez. Alright. Um... Yeah, Stoneforge Mystic and Esper Sentinel are the big costs, apparently. So now our choice. We could play there as a saga, but I think I think I kinda just wanna do this. Fix our mana. Get the black here. Get an overgrown tomb. And I want to play Stoned Forge Mystic. Stoned Forge Mystic is going to get. A cauldron. And we're going to attack. And now next turn, we could do a lot of stuff. Oh, what what plays? So what goes Bloodstained Mire into Steam Vents? Interesting. Uh, maybe this is creativity? Yeah. Yeah. We are in the creativity world. Well, now they're going to play a Ren and Six, and that's not good for us. But it could be worse. We get to draw a card at least. All right, so we're just drawing to this Devoted Druid. Ping this, yep. Hmm. Not the best for us, but we're still going. So, let's see. I think we play the Saga, and I think we play Giver plus Recruiter here. Maybe we're supposed to hold up Eldamri's call and try and get the Druid, but we can actually use the Longbow here as well to ping off Creativity Tokens, which is kind of wild. Kiki Jiki, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Our hand is a bunch of nonsense, but we're one Devoted Druid away from... Oh, there he is. There he is. Okay. Well, I believe we just play our Devoted Druid. It's protected with the Giver. And then we play our this. And then we have, like, two ways to win next turn. Uh... Okay. So are we swinging this at... Ren. We're probably blocking here. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna pass. <laughs> I don't think I'm actually gonna block. I think we just chill here with our devoted druid. Just looking, looking, looking fine. Because we kill them. We have literally everything we need to kill them in play right now. We don't need the Vizier. We don't need anything. We just need to activate this Devoted Druid. Alright, so the question is, do we block this? And I think the answer is no. They're not even going to attack. What? What, what, what? No attacks. Okay. We'll flip our dude. Flipping dude here is kind of sick. Because it makes Vizier cost one. Okay. So I'm going to... Float a mana here. And we're going to get... I think we want to get the Springleaf Drum. So we can have more mana this turn. 
I think we're going to try to win this turn. Okay. So step number one, we're going to play our land. And we're going to play Vizier of Remedies. It costs one because this dude's flipped. And creature spells cost one less to cast. All right. So now I would like to make mana. I would like to untap. Okay. So what the fuck? It's W for this. Untap. All right. We're making all of the manas. We're making all of the manas. I guess we want to equip Luxor to this too. Right? We might as well as equip Luxor to this. No, it doesn't. I don't know how this works. Let's think about it. Uh, it won't get counters, right? Because of this, so it won't grow. So there's no point in equipping equipping it. Done. We figured it out. I think, right? Is that that's how that works, right? Plus up some for each counter, so it doesn't get counters. So, all right. So we figured it out. All right. So ba ba ba. Should make a bunch of mana. Make a bunch of mana. We're gonna cast Longbow. Bop. So then we're gonna equip Longbow to Druid. If they if they kill this, we'll just make infinite mana Aldamri's call for Walking Ballista. I really don't want to click it that many times. I want to represent that I have the way to kill them. And then I want to make them try and do something about it. Equip. Leyline Binding. Okay. Leyline Binding comes down. We are going to give her... Protection from white. Or protection from white. Oh, they're turning the longbow. Oh, fuck. I'm so stupid. Oops. <laughs> I thought they were turning the druid. Alright, well, now we gotta kill him another way. Uh, Eldamri's call. Let's get Walking Ballista. Don't make me do it. Okay. Yeah. So, I made the mistake. I thought they would target the Druid here, but they targeted the bow. So I didn't need to use this, but it didn't matter if I use this, because this thing's just infinite mana. They can't stop the infinite mana. So we had a bunch of ways to kill them. So that worked out. Even if they went attack with this, make a dude creativity, one, two, three, make two guys. We just sack, sack, put Luxor on this. And then we could have killed them with all our shit in our hand. All right. That was pretty sweet. That worked out pretty well. So. Gaddick Teague, right? I should queue up uh, verse them? No. First of all. First of all. First of all. No. I don't want to. I don't want to. All right. So we have. What do we want to do against them? Uh, I guess. I mean, we could go full hate here. I don't even know what we sideboard. Yeah, so let's just look at it like this, right? I can play on Magic Online, and as long as I have a 50% win rate, I can make money and continue to play on Magic Online for free, or I can sink money into Arena that I'll never see again and always just invest into Arena, and it just takes my time, and it takes my money, and it doesn't give me anything back. It's like, I've had relationships like that in the past. So I can give, and I can give, and I can give, or I can give and take. So, all right, what do we want to do here? Uh, we don't need Shadow Sphere, I don't think. 
I don't think we need... Uh, the mites are kind of going to be good, I think. I don't know. This is kind of a rough matchup. Uh, I think we can cut a Tyvar. I think we want these cards in. I think we can cut a Vizier, I think. And we'll play like this. <laughs> Guard Charm on the list instead of the Counter Verdict. Um, <clears throat> what's up? Uh, I would say that the problem is with the, like, the problem is leaving up mana. Like, Yogg's such a greedy deck that, like, if... <laughs> thank you, Burnt. Thank you, Burnt. As always, thank you. Um, you, you made me lose my train of thought. Thank you. Um, the issue would be if, if control is a bigger problem... But realistically, the only card that's a problem for Yawgmoth is Fury. Like, Verdicts and Bindings, like, Control's kind of an easy matchup with Thought Seizes. So I don't think you need the help against Control. And it does work against Fury, but it's hard to hold up two mana against Fury when it comes out on turn one and turn two and turn three, right? So, like, it puts you in a really awkward situation where, like, Having to hold up the two mana to get the Golgari Charm Regeneration effect is easy to do against Control, but I don't feel like we need the help against Control. I feel like we need the help against early, aggressive Furies, and it's going to be tremendously difficult to have a board state and hold up a, a Golgari Charm in the face of Fury activation. So that would be my uh, issue with the card. Maybe if Control is a bigger part of the meta... But I don't see it as like a clean answer. It's like a clean answer late game when you have the extra mana. But generally speaking, the Furies that hurt the most are the turn 3, turn 4 Furies. When like you're tapping out and you're developing your board. It would force you to play entirely different. And it would cause you to put yourself... It would be very hard to leverage it early. And those are the Furies that break your back, if that makes sense. So that's that's my that's my take on it. And that's... It's my two cents. All right, so this hand kind of blows. Um, I don't think Tyvar. I mean, in some ways Tyvar is good with Enchantress, and in other ways it's not very good. Like, it does save the fact that all your dudes get killed, right? So, like, the big problem with Enchantress is that all your dudes die all the time. Right? So your dudes... These dudes just get murdered. Murked instantly. So these things are always dying. And Tyvar returning Sanctum Weaver is a pretty big game. But the problem is all your other enchantments have Shroud. So like once you have Sterling Grove in play, you can't use Tyvar's untap on your creatures. Which kind of makes it a lot worse. But it is powerful. It is a very powerful effect when you re can recur a Sanctum Weaver. But if your thing gets pendinged, it feels really bad. Like, it's good against, it's good against, like, but it's also slow because you need to, like, develop your board. So it can be very powerful returning these things, but it has diminishing returns because this gives your shit Shroud, which is before Hexproof. So you can't use Tyvar to untap these. All right, uh, where were we? I'm getting lost in the sauce here. All right, let's play Esper Sentinel. And let's play this. Okay. So we do have the Eldamri's call to get the Orvar should they decide to get Frisky and uh, try and creativity us. Well, the idea is that Golgari Charm is flexible and it can get rid of a binding. Like, I think Golgari Charm would be a good answer if uh, some of those decks were a larger part of the meta. Devoted Druid. <clears throat> okay, so now we have some choices here, right? So, we can hold up the Urza Saga activation... We can hold up Eldamri's call for Orvar. We can hold up everything. We can hold up the world here. Which is what I think we're going to do. I think I'm just going to pass. 
And hold up call. Yeah, I think I like holding up call. Hold up call. The only issue would be is if they go for creativity holding up spell pierce. That would kind of suck, but it is what it is. Who are we going to call? Orvar. Who are we going to call? Orvar. Orvar! Help me. Orvars are only five bucks, by the way. For those who want some stonks, or whatever the fuck it's called. And for some reason... Like, what the fuck is this? Why is this version $17? And this weird-ass promo is five bucks. Like, what the, f what the fuck is this? Why is there this much price difference? That's obs insane. Like, why is this five dollars? I mean, obviously, these are in the bots. These... They must have flooded the bot market with this. Yeah. Well, no, I think that they're flooding the chests with these. So that's why I think people are opening these in chests. But, like, this this price is not going to retain. What's Tasha's? Well, whose fault is this? Jace's fault. Papa Jace's fault. Okay, so we're going to get hit with this shaman here. Uh, I think we just take it. It's gonna suck, but sometimes you gotta take it. If we make a guy, then they just creativity us and we, like, lose the game. Alright, so... They didn't make a land drop. So they're obviously holding up some kind of, like, spell pierce or something. I don't really want to walk this into a spell pierce. I'll just make a dude. I'll just make a dude. Alright, now we have a bunch of creatures do we want to make another dude no i don't think so all right let's photo mana here let's get uh haywire might to kill this fable before something terrible happens to us and let's play a slower game here let's slow things down the teferi way kill the fable I kind of want to use this one mana for something. I guess we shock this in. And we kill the fable. I guess we're still holding up call. Which is rough. I don't think we're attacking. Even though they're going to play... Wow. Wow. Now, we will block this time. We will block the Construct this time. The Construct will block. So they could blow us out here with, like, a, a, a bolt or something. They could bolt this. But hopefully we'll get to draw if they do this. Esper Sentinel. This does get us blown out, kind of. But it's okay. I mean, if they're using this on an Esper Sentinel, when they have a million mana... Alright. So let's try for an Eldamari's Call here. Let's get Orvar, just to have it. So, now what do we do? Now we play a land. Uh, now, what can we do here? We can Devoted Druid. We can play Tyvar... So, they didn't spell pierce us. Which means we're probably good to play Tyvar. So, you go Tyvar plus Giver. It seems okay. Uh, let's try that. Let's play a Tyvar here. Okay, well, they got us. They got us. Okay. Mm -hmm -hmm. What's up, Lesnar? How are you? They didn't want to spell Pierce Sale Domery's call. It's kind of wild to me. But whatever. Pending. Two. Nature's Claim. 
Alright. They're just all reactionary shit. Uh, Druid Tyvar. I guess we play... Let's try Gaddock Teague here. Let's see. Let's see how much removal they have over there. See if we could tax them out of removal. Because Gaddock Teague stops pending. Gaddock Teague stops pending. Gaddock Teague stops Leyline Binding. Gaddock Teague stops Creativity. Gaddock Teague does a lot of work in this matchup. A lot of work. But it doesn't stop Lightning Bolt. It doesn't, doesn't stop that either. All right. Let's try... What do we want to play now? I would like to play Tyvar and get back this and kill this. But I guess we probably play a Druid here. And go for the win next turn. Yield through the turn. Spike, thank you. Welcome, everyone. We are playing Tyvar in Devoted Druid. Uh, and we're playing against Creativity. This is game number two. Thank you, Spike. I appreciate it. I never get to raid you. That's the opposite. You always get to raid me. I never get to raid you. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Um, so, this is kind of a weird game. We're in a weird spot. They've had a lot of removal interaction for us. But, they just pitched a Creativity here, which is kind of crazy. They pitched... Creativity and Dwarven Mine. They know about the Orvar because we got it off an El Eldamri's call here. So, this is a weird spot. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you for the gifted subs. Mercurio, original Garb Dog. Thank you for the subscription. Thank you, Spike, as always. You're the best. Um... So, they're probably going to hard cast a 1, 2. So, Gaddick Teague stops non-creature spells with an X and their mana cost can't be cast. So, they're probably trying to cast a pres... Jeez. Burnt... You, you lunatic. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Burnt. 20 gifted subs. Jeez. Thank you, man. Thank you to Yoda as well. So crazy, Brian. All right. So now we we don't have the kill though, unfortunately. So we can vizier here, right? But we get infinite mana. But we don't have the white to cast the Eldamri's call. But we can cast the vizier here. And we can get infinite mana and we can Tyvar and we can... So now we're just going to make the mana. Okay. So we can Tyvar... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cancel. Turn off auto yields. So we hit W. So let's make some mana. Make some mana. Alright. So... Now we can play Tyvar. So if we Tyvar minus and get a Stoneforge Mystic, we can win the game with the Stoneforge Mystic. So we can also bring back the Haywire Might and kill this Fable. All right, so let's go minus three. We're looking for Stoneforge Mystic here. Uh, yes, I would. There's the Stoneforge Mystic. Beautiful. We'll get the Stoneforge Mystic. Draw. Yes. We'll get Longbow. Okay. Now we cast the Longbow. Now we equip... The longbow to the druid. So we actually messed up here. 
We should have taken the Dust Watch Recruiter so we could have drawn our whole deck. Besage you. Well, this is fine, right? This is fine because this gives us the white mana to Eldamari's call for the Walking Ballista. So I accept. Yes. We grab the Snow Covered Plains. Now we make some more mana. W. Make a mana. Bonk, bonk. Bonk, bonk. Bonk, bonk. Now we go Eldamari's Call. In which we get the Walking Ballista. And then they're dead. That was pretty crazy. Alright, that worked out really well. So I beat Creativity. Something nobody could do at the Pro Tour. But we're playing a different format, but still. Alright. So, I guess this is a keeper. I guess we're keeping this. What does Orvar do? do? Orvar counters... So, Orvar's worded that people have to discard. Uh, if an opponent... If an effect controlled by opponent forces you to discard, you can play it and have it copy something. So, if your opponent has an Archon of Cruelty, you can play it and copy an Archon, your opponent's Archon. So we're going to get a Godless Shrine here, and we're going to start off with Esper Sentinel. So that's, it's it's a counter to Archon of Cruelty. Does that make sense? So you can, you can Eldamri's Call for it, and then you discard, then they have to sack their Archon, and it's really kind of awkward. Okay. So what is this? This looks like control. So our choice here is, do we play the Stoned Forge Mystic? Do we play the Druid or do we play the Recruiter? So generally speaking, decks that are playing Castle Vantress are sort of control decks. And I kind of want to play the Dust Watch Recruiter to force them into action, which will force, which will let me draw a card. So I think I'm going to play the Recruiter, and if they don't do anything, then the Recruiter flips to this, which gives us creature spells cost one less to cast, so we'll be able to do both. So I'm going to start with Recruiter here, and they're reading it. This is going to eat, this is probably going to eat something, and we'll attack. So we're on the assumption that we're playing against some kind of elemental based control. It's not really Elementals, but it's probably just Control, because Elementals probably wouldn't play Castle Vantress, right? Well, if we play the Druid, they're just like 1-2 pending, right? That would kind of suck. If we played this Druid, they're just like, alright, pending. That would not be great, I don't think. Especially since we're so far away from establishing Druid combo, right? We don't have anything to go with the Druid. We just have a naked druid, and nobody wants to see those. I mean, some people do, but that's a different part of the internet. Um, but, I don't know. I think this forces them to do stuff, and if they just leave up Counterspell here, like this dude flips. <laughs> uh, not really. No, that was a bad. I shouldn't have said that. Okay. Yeah. I think this for forces the action. I mean, they're solituding this. That's pretty crazy. Like, if we would have played Druid, it would have just been solituded. Now they're holding up Counterspell, too. Kind of awkward. Alright. Uh, step number one. Let's attack with our little duder. Let's get in there for some damage. So now we have to imagine that they're holding up Counterspell. They didn't want our little guy to flip, right? So, our little guy did work. He ate a solid dude. It's okay. Uh, so, now we have some choices, right? So, whatever we play here is probably eating Counterspell. Uh, I imagine if I want something countered, I'd probably want the Stoneforge countered. I could just pass an Eldamri's call at the end of their turn. Or, 
I could Eldamri's call right now for another Esper Sentinel. So this kind of forces some action from them. Okay, let's just get another Esper Sentinel and let's play another Esper Sentinel. This is like Control's nightmare, right? They don't want to they don't want you drawing cards. They want to be drawing cards. Yeah, I mean, yes, we have the stuff to win if we just mindlessly jammed our creatures. But the point was playing this was... Right? Like, playing this was playing around stuff. We could, yes, just mindlessly jam our stuff, and we could have won. But I don't really want to play like that. I don't think that's the way to win with a deck like this. I don't think if you just mindlessly play your, you know... If I ran out Devoted Druid, they would have just, you know, it would have been... That would be, like, down Devoted Druid. Yes, we have all the tools to win, but we want to try and play smart a little bit. We want to try and be a little smart sometimes. Okay. So that being said, I'm going to pre-combat cast a Stoneforge Mystic because I don't want to... I want them to, if they want to counterspell my Stoneforge, I want them to do it... Smart? What's that? I don't know. We're going to pre-cast the Stoneforge Mystic because if they spend mana to counterspell it, they can't Shark Typhoon so we can attack with these Esper Sentinels. Right? I want to do this pre-combat so if they have a counterspell or whatever, they tap out now so I don't get these things eaten. But I guess if they eat, then I can resolve my spells. But I don't necessarily want to resolve my spells because if I go this into this... Then they can just verdict me next turn. So I don't really want to play this out. I just want to get... I guess I'll get a Cauldra. Force them to deal with the Stoneforge. And we'll hold up this. And I guess if they cycle and kill one of these, that's fine. Ba -ba -ba. If they cycle a Shark Typhoon and kill one, that's fine. But if we play the Devoted Druid and they just go land Verdict, we do draw two cards, but it'd be kind of annoying. So hold up this Eldamri's Call. And... We have the tools to win the game on the board. So Cauldra's not that great against, uh, Arc against Archmage Charm. But... Uh, let's see... Let's... What do we want to do here? What do you want to call for? That's the real question. Uh, let's... Eldamari's call... For what? What do we want to call for? I guess we get a... Yeah. They, don't, they, they haven't even done anything, right? They have to have... A lot of pieces of interaction. All right, let's get a Vizier. Now, the issue is, do we want to play the Cauldra? Cauldra's quite the clock, but it has issues with Archmage Charm and stuff like that. If they were to Archmage Charm the Cauldra, it could be bad for us. But we can also use the infinite mana. I think we're just going to... Just gonna attack with all these. Gonna attack here. And we're gonna hold up. We're gonna hold up Saga activation. Don't really wanna play into Verdict. I feel like at some point, if we just put enough stuff on the board, they have to like deal with our stuff and we can just use Sagas. I mean, we have gigantic Sagas next turn. We could just be a little patient here, I think. Don't see... I guess they're going to verdict here. A little unfortunate, but... Dress down into verdict. Okay. Dress down's kind of annoying. But I'm glad I didn't play out more creatures into this... Upcoming verdict. Yeah, we can saga on the end step. We have to wait for the dress down to go before we saga. 
<laughs> okay. So here comes probably a supreme verdict. If they don't supreme verdict me, I'm going to be disappointed, I think. Because that dress down into like... Because the dress down nullifies the Esper Sentinels. We do get priority because dress down goes at the beginning of the end step. So there'll be a trigger. This thing will die. So it, it, like after the beginning of the end step, which is in the middle of the end step, we'll have priority again to make a duder off the saga. What's up, Steve? What up, buddy? One, two, three. Is this a Teferino? What? Returning Orphan Guard? What? That's not... This is not... This is not gonna... Are they just making blockers? Is that what's happening here? Are we just making blockers? Huh, what? Okay. Alright. I'm good. How about you? So now the dress down ends, right? I guess they just want a blocker. They, they're they tired of me needling them to death. So they want a blocker. All right. So what do we want now? I think we want a... I don't think we want to make another token. So I think we'll float the mana. I think we'll get Luxor. I think we'll get Luxor here. I think we'll get Luxor. I think we'll use the white mana to Stoneforge. We'll put in the Cauldra. Put in Cauldra. Living Weapon. And we're going to swing for a bit. We're going to swing for a bit here. And we're going to play Devoted Druid. And we play Devoted Druid. Okay. And if they verdict us, we draw a million cards and we still have a Cauldra, which I'm okay with. They're jammed up on the fifth land. So I, I don't know. If they use Archmage Charm to steal the Cauldra, we just go infinite with the Druid. Right? Where's Infect at? We played Infect yesterday, and it did not go well, Steve. It did not go well. It did, it did not go well at all today, yesterday. I mean, Infect went as you expected, right? We beat Tron. We beat the decks that didn't have interaction. And then against Murktide and Ren and Six dot four color dot pile, whatever pile people are playing these days, just destroyed us. Okay. All right. We got there. That was pretty sick, right? We just kind of squeezed them with the Esper Sentinels, and they didn't have the mana to play the game. And we played around Verdict. We played around some stuff, and uh, they cast three spells that game. That's not going to cut it. All right, what do we want? We want Elgatic Tigo. We definitely want Tigo. And none of these cards do anything. I guess we could bring in Hushbringer to, like, nullify Solid Dudes. But that seems like a stretch. That seems like a bit much. Um, we could probably definitely cut the Shadow Sphere. We, we probably don't need this fist-to-fist -fist combat. Fisticuffs combat type card. We could probably bring in Pithing Needle to name like a Teferi or something, but I don't know. We probably don't even need that. They're probably playing Wat Watu's List, who's cut those kind of cards. What's the Planeswalker do? It get, You may activate abilities of creatures though you had haste. Untap up to one creature. Mill three cards and you may return a creature with mana value... Two or less from a graveyard to the battlefield. So, a lot. Yeah. Well, Pushbringer is for Fury. Uh, this is for Orvar for um, creativity. 
Archon, so Archon makes you, Archon of Cruelty makes you discard, and then if a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard this card, create a token that's a copy. So then you copy their Archon and make them sack an Archon. It's the, the tech. And since you're playing Aldamri's Call, you might as well play some fun stuff like that, right? Uh, so, let's bring in the Gaddic Teague over the Shadow Sphere. And I think that's all we really need for now. I think that's all we really need for now. Um, yeah, I guess we could, we could justify these two cards. But I don't really think we need to, like, cut anything for these. I think we just play the Gaddic Teague and chill. I like Emrakul for the cast trigger. I mean, the cast trigger it is... There is a reason to have it. The cast trigger is pretty powerful. Alright, so... This hand kind of sucks. But we do have Gaddic Teague. Let's, let's see what Gaddic Teague does. Gaddic Teague gets solid, dude. But... Okay. Maybe we should have kept a hand with, like, Esper Sentinel or something. We're just gonna... Okay. Um... Guess we just play this. Play this. Yield. So, unfortunately, we have to walk... We have to expose Gaddic Teague to a Counterspell. Which does kind of stink, but... They only play four. And if they counter Gaddic Teague, maybe they don't have a counter for Tyvar. And then we can just Tyvar him back. Uh, shock. I probably also shouldn't be shocking as much. I could probably I could probably do better with my mana. Probably could have fetched basic forest instead of this. Alright, so Tyvar gets countered. Sad day. Hopefully they play Teferi here and bounce Luxor, and then we can resolve Tyvar. Gaddic Teague gets countered, and then we can, like, Tyvar bring back the Gaddic Teague. That'd be kind of nice. Because Gaddic Teague stops Prismatic Ending, and Gaddic Teague stops, uh, Leyline Binding. Hmm. So we can Devoted Druid here. Or we can Tyvar. Druid's looking kind of lame. I guess we could just play a Druid. Let's just play a Druid. See if we can bait out another Counterspell. Because they have to respect this because of the Luxor. Alright. Mismatching Counterspells. Tilt. Next turn, we can Tyvar, return Druid, use Druid, untap Druid, Play this land and equip Luxor to Druid, I think. It's equipped three. So Druid, activate. Yeah, I think we can we can kill them next turn. If they don't have a solid dude, I believe they're dead. Okay. So let's play the Saga. Let's play Saga. They do need... All right, one, two, three, Tyvar. Minus Tyvar. Return Devoted Druid. Yes. Devoted Druid. Activate. Minus. Don't have Solitude, please. Please don't have Solitude, please. Please don't have Solitude, please. Okay. One, two, equipies. Well, this is it. They either have it or they don't. Uh, on top. Ha. <laughs> All right. I'm, yes. All right. On tap. Bop. On tap. Bop. On tap. But on that. Alright, so unfortunately I have to do this a bunch. So uh how are your guys' day? 
So eighty. I know. I know it's eighty clicks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just spam click. I'm I'm spam clicking. Look at us go. All right. I wonder if they have subtlety. They would have countered Tyvar, I have to imagine. Do, 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 do. Almost there. Almost there. Got to get to 36. Got to get to 36. Da, 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 da. I mean, we don't have to. We could cast it as a 15-15 and just pump mana into it. You know, like, it doesn't. But the fact that they're here for this, which is what I, I appreciate. All right, 36 mana should be 18. Oh, God. Make it 69. Nice. Uh, 18. Okay. And save targets. Turt you. Monk. Remove. Okay. We wanna we want all of this. Boink. Boink. Remove. Boink. Boink. <laughs> Boink. They probably went to get a sandwich. They're like, ah, oh, I'm just going to go in the other room. Boink. Where did I find this list? This list came from... Uh, oh, five O's. This list came from the leagues. Uh, yay, they figured it out. All right. We kind of dunked on them. So, this is where I got the list from. I got this list from Tuklo, uh, from the leagues, and I made one change. I swapped the Gaddic Teague for an Orvar. Because I was like, if I'm going to play Aldamri's Call... I might as well play fucking Orvar. Why is Tasha's going up in value? Jace? I'm going to do this. All right, what do we think of this hand? Are there too many sagas in this hand? Jason Ruin Crab. Yeah. There's free... I, I got to... I found the scam ones. Um, I guess we could keep this hand, right? We're on the draw... We don't have a one drop though. Mm, do we like this hand? It kind of sucks, but it's kind of good. Mm, yeah, it has everything we need, which is kind of wild. It's kind of weird to say. Val the Cut, the Molten Pinnacle, huh? Mm. Uh, let's just play that and we'll fetch up the thing into. I don't know. Well, it depends on what kind of Valdicut they are. Oh, they're that kind of Valdicut? Okay. Well, shit. Now we're going to go turbo combo. <laughs> All right. Let's crack this. Let's get this. Let's draw ourselves a Vizier. Oh. Okay. Uh play Devoted Druid. And let's pass the turn. We kill them in two turns? Unless we rip Vizier. We are probably dead. <laughs> yep, we're probably getting dunked on here. But the Eternal Optimist in me says we might not get dunked on because their hand might suck. But we could get dunked on. 
Uh, that's not good for us. Bajuka Bog, okay. Alright, let's draw a Vizier and kill them. Vizier, please! Okay, that's not a Vizier. Uh, da, 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 da. uh, we're playing this, and we, Stoneforge is two, Tyvar Lottery, we could Tyvar Lottery, okay, so let's think about it, if we Stoneforge Mystic, we get the thing, we play the thing, we get two mana, we can't equip. So I think Tyvar Lottery is a good way to go here. Let's get the Overgrown Tomb. One. Oh, we need black. Should we tap? Should we tap the Druid here? Yeah, let's tap the Druid. So we can leave our white up so we could Stoneforge. Tyvar Lottery. Alright, one, two, three, show me a vizier. Okay, yes. Actually, does this do it? One, two, Stoneforge. Stoneforge gets us a Luxor. Actually, we probably don't get Luxor, right? One, uh, untap, untap. So you can make two mana. We probably get Cauldra. So they think that our thing's a threat. We can get Luxor off this Urza Saga. So let's get Cauldra here. And let's yield. So, now my friends, we're trying not to die to Titan. We're dead to Titan. Fuck. One turn too late. All right, I'm not going to make you guys watch them get a Primeval Titan, get the two things. I guess, are we dead? They've played a one land. They get these two. They're going to haste. Yeah, we're dead. Because we're going to take a million damage. Uh, we're taking nine, and then they get two Valdicuts with this, and then they have a land drop. Yeah, we're dead. We needed to get lucky with Tyvar and hit a Vizier. We didn't, and we die. Okay, so. Uh, solid dude, seems good. Hushbringer? Uh, we probably want Haywire Might. We didn't have the white mana. So we probably want Haywire Might. We probably want Hushbringer. We probably want... We have to be careful with Hushbringer plus uh, Stoneforge Mystic. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty sick. Those are sweet. Thank you. Uh, done. Let's save that for later. Okay. Um, so, what do we... Do we need Shadow Sphere? I mean, maybe we need Shadow Sphere. Esper Sentinels probably draw us some cards. We probably don't need Giver Ruins. I mean, they might have Dismember. But, maybe we're going to cut Givers... And we're going to play this interaction here. Um, we could also Pithing Needle on Beseju. That might not be a terrible idea. Alright. And let's get rid of Spellskite. Okay, so we have Pithing Needle for Beseju. We have Hush Hushbringers to stop Titans. Alright, let's jam. Esper Sentinel is still our best turn one play. But I don't think we need Giver just for Dismember. 
Boy, this hand, uh, too many lands. Okay. Turn. Mm. I mean, we have everything we need to win the game, but is it going to be fast enough? That's the question. Turn one. Turn one, pass. Turn two, devoted druid. Turn three, stoneforge. Turn four, win the game. I guess I guess we have to keep it. We'll keep. We'll put back Horizon Canopy. And we'll start off with Tapland. Tapland, Lair of the Hydra, Stoneforge. Okay, so let's play Tapland. Pass. This hand is not very good against Druid, against Titan. We don't have enough interaction, but we do have Devoted Druid. And we do have a win con in our hand. Uh, let's draw a Haywire Mite. Give me a Mite, please. Uh, okay, so now we play Layer. We play Druid. Yields. We're probably dead here. I think we are going to be too slow as well, but... Okay, let's draw Vizier and win the game. We're so dead. One turn too slow. Alright, well... Can we beat three amulets? I think you know the answer to that. I think you know the answer. Alright, let's play Stoneforge. Trigger. We'll get Luxor. We'll get Luxor. And we'll shock this in. And play... Actually... We'll play Esper Sentinel. And then we'll play Recruiter. They're going to dismember our thing? Are they killing the Stoneforge? No respect for Devoted Druid. That's so wild. Alright. Uh, Recruiter. Alright. Here's what I'm going to do. I have to use the bathroom. It'll be quick. But I will just let them dunk on me. While you, I'll be right back while you guys can watch them dunk on me. How am I alive? What, what the fuck happened? What happened? Uh... Okay. Uh, I don't know if they're a genius because I can't use the Howler, but I have the Lair of the Hydra. How did I live? There, I, I, we just pumped the Hydra. Hydra kills them. What? What? What happened? Did they just not have it. <laughs> uh. We didn't die? I'm blown away. Uh, alright. Well. Now here's a question. Spellskite redirect the... Can Spellskite redirect Slayer Stronghold? Ooh. What do you think of that? What do you think of Spellskite? Probably, probably not terrible. It's probably better than what? What's it better than? Maybe an Esper Sentinel on the play. It can't redirect Gardens though, for sure. Maybe the Esper Sentinel on Shadow Sphere. Yeah, it's probably better than Shadow Sphere. 
Okay, what do we got? What do we have here? We are missing the devoted druids. However, we can turn one saga for a thing, and we have Aldamri's call. Hmm. Fuck it. Lands of spells. Keep. Lands and spells. Uh huh. Amulet. Okay, reasonable. All right. Let's draw Haywire Might. Where's Stoneforge? Are we playing... I don't think we could play Saga on one. I think we're going to have to Aldamri's Call for, like, some crazy shit. So... We're probably going to have to Aldamri's Call for Solitude. Uh, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to throw away our stuff to interact with them. I think it is a slow hand for sure. It's slow. Dryad. Yep. It is for sure a slow hand. Why? Why would you play Thran Spider? That card sucks. Dustwatch Recruiter is castable. It doesn't suck. Like, what, like, why is Thran Spider better? Like, we had Dustwatch Recruiter get solituded in our prior match, and, like, that card's good. Whereas Spider is just useless. I guess we get the black here. Like, I, I don't see the point of Thran Spider. It just does nothing. Okay. So, do we have to Eldamri's call for a Solitude, or can we play Druid? Spider doesn't die to Bolt? Sure. But by the time, by the time you're using it, Bolt doesn't matter. <laughs> by the time you're using it, it doesn't matter. Uh, devoted the the green card is just strictly better in every way. I guess we'll just pass. Hold up the Eldamri's call. Yeah, I think they're gonna get two titans. I don't I don't think there's like anything we could do on the oh expedition map. What? All right, what do we think about? Getting a Solitude and killing this Dryad Arbor right now. They haven't played a single... What do we think about Solitude right now and kill this? I think we just do that right now. They haven't played a land. They haven't done anything. Where's my Solid, dude? Uh, sorry, Stoneforge. Bonk. All right. Get out of here. So now they're significantly slower. Their whole world's messed up. Hopefully we've ruined their world. We ruined everything. Hopefully we ruined everything. They had a scheme. You see what I do? Is I take the schemers... No, I don't want to say that. Um, and that worked out. They still have Teleria West, though, which gets uh, something terrible. Summoner's Pact. All right. So we need to draw... Hushbringer would be sweet. Spellskite. Hmm. Hmm. So, from what I'm looking at, I could play Devoted Druid, or I could play the Spell Sky. I think I need to play Devoted Druid. Or we could Tyvar, minus, 
go spelunking. We could Tyvar minus go spelunking. And then Druid next turn. Right? If we are going to hold up Druid. Or we could play Spellskite. Spellskite stops the Titan haste. But do we think that they're going to be able to play a Titan next turn? They can Pact for an Azusa. And then b -b 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 Azusa stuff. Dark Poet Bill. Thank you for the eight months. Yeah, let's let's go spelunking with Tyvar. Tyvar. Yeah, you suck, Tyvar. I want to hit yes. It didn't work. Okay, next turn we could play Druid, use Druid, Stoneforge to do stuff. They always have Titan next turn. True. One, two, Dryad. Okay, that's not good. All right. Well, next turn they will for sure have a... Okay. Can we kill them? Can we kill them? So, we go one, two, Devoted Druid. Tap it. Untap it. Okay. Let's see if we can play this. First things first, can we play the Spellskite to protect the Devoted Druid from schnassiness from our opponent? Let's find out. So, we're going to play the Devoted Druid. We can tap the Devoted Druid. So, the Devoted Druid is three mana. So it's two to cast. Stoneforge. Stoneforge is going to be three to get the stupid thing. And then it's going to be three to equip. So we don't have enough mana. Is that right? Uh... It's three mana from the Druid, right? So we go one, two, Druid, play the Druid, mi minus get a mana, untap it with Tyvar, right? So then we untap the Druid with Tyvar. And then we can tap it again. That's three mana. And then four, five for this. We're one mana short of going Devoted Druid... Stoneforge kill you. So if we aren't doing that, what can what else can we do? I guess we're playing the Devoted Druid. Let's play, just play the Devoted Druid. Let's get a mana. Let's untap it. Yeah. If we would if we would have played Druid last turn instead of doing this. Yeah, we would have won. So this is two. I guess we play the Stoneforge. Uh, yes. Let's get Luxor. Let's tap. Play. Play Spellskite. And I guess we can untap. Play Luxor. Luxor. All right. Pass the turn. So our hopes and our dreams rest with the fact that our opponent isn't going to know how Spellskite works. That's how we're going to play this turn. Because if they get a Titan and they try to haste the Titan, we can redirect the haste to the Spellskite. That's our hopes and dreams. All our hopes and dreams rest with you, little homie. We need you now. Cultivator Colossus. Oh, fuck. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. 
One, two, three, four. Just stop. You could stop now. You could stop now. You could stop now. Uh. Okay. It appears they had some lands. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right, we're, we're dead. We can redirect. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, the problem is they have the Slayer Stronghold to haste the... They have the Slayer Stronghold to haste this. We'll see what they target with all this. We'll just let them put all the triggers on the stack. If our spell skite can survive. Yeah, they have Slayer Stronghold. So we'll see what they target. Yeah. So this Slayer Stronghold copies this. All right. So what are they targeting? Me, me, me. Just all going face. One, Tyvar, this, this. I guess they're leaving the spell skite alive. It's all right. So they sent two here. So we're taking. Uh, let's see if let's honestly let's see if we can figure this out. But the problem is they have four cards in their hand. They probably have another Titan. So let's let them do all their triggers. Let them do all their untap stuff. 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 Uh, untap. 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 So let them bounce their land. So now this trigger is going at me. Uh, I need to keep the spell schedule. Six, eight, nine, eighteen. The problem is if I pay the life to redirect to this, I just I'm, I'm dead. I kill the spell skite, and then they can slayers this. So we're we're dead. We're dead. All right. Needs to be a little bit faster against this deck or play Force of Vigors or something. Uh, Haywire Might's not, not cutting it against that deck. The Dryad of Elysian Grove makes everything tap for any color. So they did have it. Okay. Turn one, Esper Sentinel. Turn two, Devoted Druid. Okay. Turn one, Esper Sentinel. Pay two. Play Esper Sentinel. All right, so what plays Arid Mesa? We're about to find out. It's probably Creativity. Jetmir's Garden. Um, looks like Creativity. One, two. Black and green. You probably need red there, friend, to cast that Ren and Six. Cool, Ren and Six. Fun and neat. Layer the Hydra. That's interesting. Uh, I guess we just put them to the test. So we're gonna play this, and we're just gonna put them to the test. If they don't have a bolt, they die. Just gonna put them to the test. Yeah, burn's gone. Burn doesn't exist anymore. I don't think we have the time of trying to be cute and fancy. If they don't have a removal spell for this Dryad, they're going to lose. Hope If they play like... Hopefully they play Fable or something. Damn it. Well, shit. Alright. So... What do we want to do now? Stoneforge... Plus Giver. We do have a main deck, Might. So if we start the Stoneforge now, 
we can get rid of this. But we can't do Giver plus Stoneforge. And if we do Giver plus Stoneforge, if they just have Creativity, we're in trouble. I guess if they have Creativity, we're just not beating it. Ever. Why don't I sack for Tyvar? Because of the Might, right? Because we, we can use the Haywire Might to get to get this back at instant speed off the Saga. Um... Hey, thank you, thank you. Very kind. Thank you very much. Good luck. Have fun. Um, I think we get the saga going and we play the Stoneforge. And... Alright. Play the Stoneforge. I think if they have creativity next turn, we're losing. We'll get the Cauldra. Let's get Cauldra. And let's play Longbow. Like, we could have cracked and gotten a white here. And then had uh, Giver plus Stoneforge. But Cauldra doesn't race Archon. Unfortunately. But if they have creativity, we'll scoop. It's just that simple. Oh, this looks like a... Expressive iteration. Ooh, somebody's been copying Yoriah's Y E R I L list. They play one expressive iteration in their list. So that's kind of cool. All right, so the culture can kill the Wren. Leyline binding. All right, well, the culture's probably not going to kill the Wren. All right. So, we don't want to play the Vizier into the Wren. Uh, okay. So, I guess we play a Giver. We could set up two Givers here. We don't have a way to give this haste if we, like, get a thing off of this. So, I wonder if it's better to play two Givers or use the Saga. It's probably better to use the Saga. It's probably better to use the Saga, I think. Than play two givers. Doomwake! Thank you for the raid. Welcome, everyone. We are playing some... Cre we're playing some Druid against Creativity, and we are losing. We are losing. Horribly. I mean, only if they have a creativity. If they have a creativity, we're scooping. Just a deck full of removal that just dunks on you on turn five. Yeah, we're just dead. All right, I don't need to see it. I guess I'll see it. Good see. Okay, so we beat this deck in game one of this of this challenge. So we want you. We want you. Uh, we want you, and we want you. And we could also, like, bring in these. We could bring in this. But the problem is they're on pendings and all kinds of crazy shit. So I think we want these. I think we can cut... I think we can cut the Shadow Sphere. I think we're way past Shadow Sphere. I think we can cut... Hmm. Huh. Cauldra is a respectable clock. But we can probably cut the Cauldra. We could probably shave a Stoneforge too. Alright. So we need one more cut. May we cut... May we don't play the Needle. But I don't know. Needle on Ren and Six is pretty good. Let's not play the needle. And let's... Call is uh, just cards in your deck. It searches your deck. All right. It's not wish. It's not like the wish card. It, it just searches your deck. Okay, this is a good hand. 
Now the question is, what's better on one? I think it's S for Sentinel. I think we want to be able to just draw. So I think this is a good start. Or is it Giver? Hmm. Hmm, this is actually a tough call. It's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. What do you think, chat? What do you guys think? Would you start off with Esper Sentinel or would you start off with Giver of Ruins? What do you guys think? Giver? Esper? Hmm. This is a tough call. But if they use removal, then we get value. All right. So. So. Don't tell me now. Don't tell me now. But what would scare you more here? Uh, Esper sent or a uh, giver of ruins? Mm. I'm going to do the opposite of whatever Mario said. Because, you know, we're going to do the opposite of whatever Mario says. <laughs> so whenever Ely comes in the chat, we'll just do the opposite. Oh, they didn't have an answer here. That's good. So now we play... We'll see. Tell me later. We'll play Devoted... Ooh. Now we'll play Devoted Druid. Ely only comes in Ely only comes in this chat when he's really bored and ready to troll. He's all he's only in full troll mode when he comes in this chat. Yeah. Alright. So unfortunately, we don't have the win. We are missing a win con. But we do have infinite mana, but we have no win. Renin six. Okay. But we're gonna draw a win. We're gonna draw a win. Right here, right now. Right here, right now, we're gonna draw a win. Win? Win? Win win, please? That's not a win. Okay. Um, the question is, do we even play the Vizier? We could draw a card with the Horizon Canopy to see if we hit. Well, the problem is if we draw, we don't have the two, the double white. I guess let's draw first. All right. Let's just play Spellskite. Pass the turn. That was a little uneventful. A little uneventful. But we dug a little bit. If we play Esper Sentinel or Vizier, they just... You know, they're just not really good right now. They get poked... Maybe Esper Sentinel... I mean, you have to imagine they have some form of removal. So maybe Esper Sentinel was the play. Alright, here comes... Prismatic Ending. Okay... Blink. I'll take that, please. I don't know if it works like that. I think it works. Oops. Don't think our opponent thought that it would work like that. Alright. Um, but they're still holding up spell peers here. Uh, so I guess now we play Asper Sentinel. And... I guess we play the Giver. And we do nothing. Yeah, if, yep. 
you can pending something for like one to uh to get a trigger get a cast trigger stuff like that so all right if they do creativity here i'm gonna spell skype don't go don't do it don't do it don't do it opponent no opponent okay they're not doing it they should probably kill the spell skite but if they kill the spell skite we have the giver giver plus spell skite is pretty snasty here all right we cannot i don't think that we can redirect the target here so let's make them pay all right so first things first, we give this protection from blue, right? Oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, no! Yeah. Hold on. Uh, protection from blue. Yes. It's already a target of the spell, so you can't change the target. Or I, I did it wrong. I did it in the wrong order. So what I needed to do there was target the spell skite, then give it protection. I did it in the wrong order. That's not really an interaction that I'm very familiar with, because I don't really do it a lot. And we just draw a bunch of lands. Neat. So, all right, let's see. What do we got here? Spell Stite and Colgan's Colon. Yes, Spell Stite is a legal target for both. Another target. Let's change target. Ugh. I did that wrong, and we should still have a giver. Uh, we're just passing the turn. They're different targets as opposed to like. I mean, I don't know. It's probably better not to lose a life against like this kind of stuff. Where my spell skate? Probably fetching to thin is probably better a little bit. But also not losing the life is probably okay. And like not having to fetch. No. Alright. Can we draw something that wins us the game? Damn it. We cannot draw anything that wins us the game. We cannot. So now they're going to. This is pretty risky to give us a draw step. What's up? All right. Um, looks like they have a thingy. Yeah. Uh, we are in trouble. Where on my thingy? Oh. Ooh, it hurts. It hurts so much. Well, we are missing the cards that win the game. Opponent is being the fun place. They're only the fun place if we face, like... Ah, oh, here comes the creativity. No. Nope. They're still not going to put us out of our misery with creativity. Come on, one more. Transmogrify? Sure. Sure. Boy, do I wish I had an Orvar. Goodbye, Esper Sentinel. You didn't do shit. Get out of here. Get out of here. All right, deck. I should have kept the Windswept Heath because I have a basic planes in the deck. 
and I don't have a basic forest in the deck anymore with the Verdant. Womp womp. Womp womp. Womp womp. GG's. GG's. Oh, okay. All right. All right, deck. Okay. 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 All right. Ah, uh, we didn't want to draw. We did not want to draw what we wanted to draw. So everything was going wonderful. We were 2-0. We were feeling ourselves, and then the wheels have come off. All right, let's play the final round just to see if we can continue our streak downward to the gutter. All right, let's do a prediction. Prediction. Start a prediction. So they're playing Murktide. So what do we got here? We got a hand of uncastables. Well... We got a hand of castables, that's for sure. So we're going to keep this. We'll put back a land. We'll put back the Verdant Catacombs. And then we'll start... We'll keep... Put back Verdant. Done. And we'll start with Temple Gardens Tapped. Turn 2, Lair of the Hydra, Viz Vizier. Turn 3 this if we play this on turn one to fetch out black we can't play vizier on two unless we shock in the temple and then we don't have layer on three so i think we need to go temple gardens tapped into this this oh ragavan eh now we go layer we could play this Saga. No, I think we're locked into playing Tyvar next turn. And now we'll play Vizier. But then I guess we don't play the Saga until way later. We're blocking. We're, we're, we're definitely blocking. Block. This guarantees a Tyvar hit. No fear. No fear. Do they have a rebirth? Sure. Better they rebirth that than something good like a fury or something crazy. Alright, so now we shock ourselves. We gotta get overgrown tomb. And then we Tyvar. Tyvar minus. Yes. Return Vizier. Yield. <laughs> yeah, if you post your thing. Alright. So we're going to pitch Haywire Might, I think. Now they have a choice between killing Tyvar, killing me. They'll definitely they'll kill Tyvar. That's good for us. So now we play Saga. Okay. And then we play another Tyvar. And then we go minus. Yes. Spellskite? Vizier? I guess Spellskite's a better blocker. Vizier trades with the thing. We probably get Spellskite back. Hmm. This is a tough one. Alright. Let's get Spellskite. Spellskite can't be bolted, which I think is pretty powerful. I mean, they can bolt it. They can obviously bolt, like, attack, we block, they bolt it. Alright, that this is, works out for us. This works out. And now we get to start making Saga tokens, and Spellskite pumps the Saga... And kind of protects the Saga tokens. I'm down with this. I don't want to block. Alrighty. So. If we draw a Devoted Druid. I'm going to. Oh that's so sick. 
That's so good for us. That's unbelievably good for us because it's going to have haste, right? So we're going to be able to play Stoneforge, get Cauldra, equip Cauldra. We just got to get double white here. Then we go one, two, Stoneforge. Trigger, yes. Get Cauldra. One, two. Activate Stoneforge. Put in Cauldra. Now we can untap Stoneforge. Now, do we attack or do we not attack? I feel as though we should probably just not attack. I think if we give ourselves time... Hmm, yeah, let's not attack. I don't know how this stack deals with Cauldra. I wanted to have blockers. The reason I untap this is because I wanted to have to be able to double block the menace. Right? Cuz like let's say we hit him for 6, we hit him for 11 and then we untap this. This is still tapped and we still end up taking a hit from one of these. So this is just a safe play, right? Like we could have attacked and then untapped it, but we would have to like double block the spell skite and if they would have a removal spell for the spell skite, that we couldn't block the grief. That would be why. That's why I untapped that. Okay. So we won game one. That's pretty cool. So this is why we have these bad boys. And these. I hear Dingo complaining about this card all the time. So let's play it. Uh, we probably... We should just play all these, right? Like... Creatures entering the battlefield, so Furies and Solitudes. Do we just jam nine cards in against this stupid deck? That can't be right. <laughs> what would we cut if we're bringing in nine cards? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. I think it still has f some fundamental issues. Yeah. Hmm. Let's not play the Hushbringer. Uh, let's cut... Let's shave some Stoneforge. Well, Stoneforge Mystics seem pretty well. Like, they just kind of scooped when they saw it. So let's cut that. Let's cut a Tyvo... Uh. Hmm. Hmm. May we shave Esper Sentinels? We could shave on Devoted Druids. We could shave the combo. We could shave these things and just go like Stoneforge Mystic. Let's try that. Let's cut the combo entirely. Let's try and be crazy. I guess I want Recruiter. Recruiter's kind of good. Uh, we'll cut Luxor. Alright, let's try this. Let's try and cut the combo. Let's see if it works. I feel like all we need to do is just get Cauldron in play. What class are my... I don't know. Whichever one had Professor Onyx. Because she was sweet. And the other ones... Will and Kendrith are stupid. So, I guess... Ink, the ink guys, they were the coolest. The Oryx or whatever, I don't remember. I remember, I remember that there was the guilds. Is either prism? It would either be. They just so ripped off Harry Potter with that set. It's so crazy. Will and Kendrith are very stupid. My only interaction with Will and Kendrith is Mario playing them in his stupid EDH deck, and playing them and being like, "Look at how good Will and Kendrith are." Meanwhile, any other card would be better than them. And he's just like, yay, I get Will, I get Kendrith. That's my only interaction with those two cards. Is Mario playing them in EDH. The stupid partner ones from Battle Bond. You got destroyed by Will one time. Calm down. Calm down. It was one time. 
<laughs> yeah, we've played like 100 games, and the one time he wins with Will and Kendrith, he's like, look at how good they are. They're so exciting. Well, there goes my Sanctifier. I completely agree with you, Sub-Zero. I'm with you 100%. Okay, I'm going to play an Esper Sentinel. <laughs> Tyvar gets back that thing. That's so cracked. I have an Esper Sentinel. Now the issue becomes... Do we play a Stoneforge Mystic and get Cauldra? I kind of don't think we do. I kind of feel like Cauldra's a trap right now. Because if they have another Thought Seize or a Grief or something, we just lose Cauldra forever. And then they can play Cauldra, which doesn't seem very good for us. So let's just do that. And do we play this? The problem is this... We kind of need... This is like a load-bearing land here. We kind of need it for black for this. And we kind of need it for green. I guess we just play the longbow. Let's get black, green. And let's play the longbow. Let's attack. Yeah. Ugh, vomit. 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 Okay, well, now we don't have a choice. Now we don't have a choice. Stoneforge Mystic, get Cauldra. Cauldra complete. Pass the turn. All right. Well, that was fun. I guess we're still not dead, right? If we draw a land, we get back... Thank you, Mercurio. And Radicus Maximus. I missed it 13 minutes ago. Thank you for the two months of support. I appreciate it. Sorry. Okay. So we die to this. We're dead. Okay. That was great. That worked out very well. Let's get rid of Longbow. Uh, let's get rid of... Let's bring in Soul Guide Lantern. And... We did get scammed. We done got scammed there. Alright, this time we'll be on the play. And hopefully we can play one of these cards. That reads, Interact with Red keep okay so we're gonna ask for sentinel ask for sentinel or forge tender on one probably ask for sentinel the haywire mites a little awkward but i figure they might try to play blood moon or something so we could keep one in the deck but probably not the wisest thing we get gala shrine here Let's play Esper Sentinel. Well, if they thought sees we draw. Okay. Uh, Forge Tender. Forge Tendy. Are you going to bolt my Esper Sentinel or not? This is their question. I'm playing a Forge Tendy. I want to tend the forges. Another Esper Sentinel. Yay, Esper Sentinel. Now nah, we're bolting. Nope, we're not bolting. Okay. Attack you! Go, die. Alright. I want. They got nothing? They got nothing, huh? Hmm. Um, I guess I hold this back for Ragavan Dash, and I attack with the two Esper Sentinels. 
I mean, if they have EE, what the fuck am I supposed to do? You know? We can't do much about it. Attack, attack. I'm gonna Eldamri's call for, uh, Sanctifier at the end of the turn. Um, so... We can play out the Haywire Might. Does kind of get us wrecked by EE, but... I think we still do it. Play the Haywire Might. We'll get Sanctifier next turn. I don't know. Maybe this is just too much stuff out on the board at one time. Right? Michael. Lightning Bolton. Grief. Well, shit. They're going to cast Grief here. Uh, hmm. I guess there's no point in Eldamri's calling, right? There's nothing we can get. Might as well make them... We could just hold up the Basaju. That just seems better than casting a Grief to get it discarded. We do not have Orvar. If only. If only we had Orvar. But, yeah. Apparently... Alright. Eldamari's call is gone. Sad day. Sad day. Cast the stupid spell so I could draw... Cast the Rebirth effect so I can draw cards. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the thing's tapped. Alright. Ooh, Saga. Hello. Uh, attack. Probably hold this back. I mean, this is a four-turn clock, but I don't want to get hit by Ragavan. Yeah. All right. Can I please draw a spell with my Esper Sentinels? Don't be Blood Moon. Magus of the Moon? Ugh. Terrific. Terrific. I think we just lose. I think we're just dead. Besiege is something your opponent controls. Uh, yeah, I guess maybe they'll eventually attack with that. What's up, Pikachu? Um. Hmm. Hmm. I don't want. I mean, what are we supposed to fucking do here? Triple block the grief. I guess we can go to five. Our only hope is to draw like... I don't know. I don't know what our hope is. Our hope is to draw... I don't know. I guess we're hoping to draw... Walking Ballista... Oh, that ain't it. That ain't it. I guess we'll gang block next turn. Yeah. There's definitely some problems with this deck. The whole format is murder creatures, and when you're trying to play creatures, it's hard out here. It's it's hard out here for creatures. It's hard out here for creatures. Alright, so we're going to have to gang block this turn, and then we're going to get blown out. Block, block, block. We're going to get blown out by a bolt. At least they can't use the Undying Malice effects. Uh-huh. And that's the game. We could sack this and save something, but then we don't have any way to deal with the thing, and we're locked out under the Blood Moon. All right, so let's pay the predictions. Choose outcome. We are 2-3 scrubs. Now, let's talk about the deck. 
I still think the deck just has fundamental flaws in that you're trying to establish creatures in a meta that is just designed to kill Ragavan and all creatures. So, like, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to play this deck. It, you need you need a lot of things to happen. It obviously has nut draws that could just kill anyone, which is what we did, right? We had some crazy nut draws where we just murdered people, right? But at the same time, a lot of interaction. I also... This saga is rough on the mana. Saga is rough on the mana. The fact you're playing a three-color deck. Like, you need Tyvar. It's It's rough. I don't think Tyvar solves the problems of the deck. The problems of just it's mad weak to removal. Being weak to removal... Yeah, being weak to removal is kind of hard. And two overgrown tombs does seem like a bit much. When you only have Tyvar as your only black. Like, you have almost as many black mana sources as you do black mana cards. So maybe we could shave one of these for like an, another hydra but then but then there's tension with like hydra and saga and basics and then you're just such a greedy mana hungry deck it's kind of rough it's 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 trying to feels like it's doing too much feels like it's trying to do too much but it's fun to play that's for sure it's definitely very 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 fun to play so, that'll be that for now, and, uh, it's not a reprint. <laughs>